welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Leslie Voigt, and I'm the director of the Digital Credentials Institute at Madison College. Uh, I'm here today to talk to you about digital badges and how they're transforming employee development. So the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, what is a digital badge? I want to make sure that we're all on the same playing field, the same uh, bandwidth, I guess we can call in this, this day and age, about what is a digital badge. There are many variations of this and many definitions out there, but in its essence, a digital badge is a digital emblem that represents something that someone has accomplished, something they've learned, their skills, their knowledge. It's representing something that's important to that individual. Uh, the badge itself contains detailed information, which I'll go into in a short bit here, about what was it that that individual learned? Where did it come from? Who issued that badge and who's saying that that individual actually earned it? Uh, you'll likely hear, if, you, if you've heard of digital badges before, you've probably also heard of the term digital credentials or micro-credentials. A lot of times those words, those, those uh, phrases, are used synonymously in some places around the world because this is a worldwide, we'll call it phenomenon, but it's a worldwide initiative that's happening right now, growing exponentially every day. A lot of times people call the digital credential or the micro-credential is the act of whatever took place. So that skill, that knowledge, and then the digital badge is the representation of that skill. So it's the actual thing that is being shown to the world to show that that sort of credential had been earned. So what is in a badge? What actually makes up these things? Um, in the middle here, you see with an image of an actual badge that we have at Madison College. This is a co-branded badge. So those of you tuning in from uh, various organizations around Dane County or potentially further out, uh, what you see is a Madison College badge represented around the outside, uh, Ford Service Corporation, that's their logo there in the center. This is a co-branded badge that we have with them. So you see an image of a badge, that's first and foremost what, you, what you're going to see. But the actual content of the badge is really where the, where the nuts and bolts are. This is, this is the meat of the badge. So the badge will be directly tied to the individual that earned it or the recipient of that badge usually tied via email, but then that individual can go in and add all different kinds of information about themselves that can be attached to that badge as well. The badge itself will, if possible, be aligned to standards, whether those are state, national, federal. Um, if there is an outside organization that the knowledge or skill or whatever that badge represents is aligned with, we can line that up inside the badge and create a very transparent crosswalk for any of those accreditation agencies or um, national federal agencies that check to make sure that what you're doing is aligned with say OSHA standards, depending on you know, the type of badge you're creating and issuing. Another important piece of these badges, especially when we look in the employer world, is the date issued and potentially the date expired. Now you don't have to expire a badge, but these badges can have expiration dates added to them. In addition to that, they can have a notification added in there. So I'll show you a badge later on that we've created with uh, the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. Their badge expires within three years per OSHA standards. So at two years and six months from when that original badge was issued, emails are gonna get sent out to the earner of that badge the supervisor of that individual and our person on our end at Madison College because it was a course that we had run for and contracted through uh, the DNR here in Wisconsin. So those names and those individuals were set up at the time the badge was created. That's who they wanted to be notified and so we put those in. So now it becomes a tracking system as well for these different types of certifications or um, uh, skills that have these expiration dates to them, CPR, OSHA, some of the big ones that we know have to be done either annually, biannually, triannually, whatever that might be. Um, obviously, there's an achievement name. In this case, this is a customer contact skills badge. Uh, this is a course that's taught at Forward Service that uh, aligns back to a course called customer contact skills at Madison College. So that is the skill or the knowledge that was attained within this badge. 
you, there will always be a description of what this badge is. So think of uh, when you Google something and you see, you know, first that URL or that title of the badge and the two or three line description. When you do a quick look at a badge, what you see is the image and then that first couple lines of the description. When you click into the badge is when you'll see all the rest of this. Uh, the issuer is whomever issued that badge out. In this case, it's coming from Madison College. Um, if you were to have your own badging system at your organization, it would obviously be coming from, from your organization or whoever that might be. Um, if you have any Microsoft certifications, Adobe, Cisco, IBM, they all have their own digital badging systems. Rather than getting those paper certificates now, you will be, re you will be receiving a digital badge. An important piece of a digital badge is the criteria. What did this individual have to do in order to earn this badge? Um, it could be as simple as, you know, a step-by-step -step process. It could be they have to, in this case, achieve at least an 80% on a capstone project. Um, there are, I, for this badge in particular, I wanna say seven or eight different criteria. That's one of those. Um, the criteria is up to the person or individual organization that is creating that badge. So what does it take? What does someone who's successful in this case in customer contact skills, what did they have to do? So it goes beyond your traditional transcripts of saying, yes, they got an A, but what do they have to do to get an A? So that's where the criteria comes in. And last but not least are skill tags. The tags for each badge are defined again by that organization and are linked to real-time workforce data. So anyone earning that badge can click on those skill tags or those words, customer service in this case, and it will automatically search in, I'll say worldwide database. I think there's about 12 different countries that it's going to search real-time job descriptions looking for the term customer service. You can narrow that down to by state, by providence, wherever you're located or wherever you might be looking and actually link to jobs that are currently posted that use the term customer service or whatever skill tag is put in that badge. So those are the real meat pieces of the badge. This is what makes it up. Here's kind of an issue of what are these badges? So as an employer, how could you use these? What would you want to do with these? Uh, one huge piece that has come out of these that actually um, originated, or the thought process behind it, originated out of IBM. So I'm going to give them a lot of credit with this here. They are using their digital badge system as a talent database. What I mean by that is they have created their own badges. They also use badges from the outside, but they have hundreds of their own badges where they're providing their own employees they're giving them badges based on things that they do and uh, courses, skills that they know. So when somebody walks in the door, a new client comes in the door and they say, we have this project where we need to have somebody who knows data analytics. We need somebody who can do research. We need somebody who can do Python programming. We need somebody who can do a lot of proofreading skills. Whatever those skills and whatever those things are that make up that kind of unicorn work team, they can now look in their digital badging system based on the badges that they've created and see who has those skills. They pull open on this case on the left side of the screen, you see all these Adobe badges that we have. This is, these are Madison College badges, as you see. So if we needed somebody who had Adobe Dreamweaver as a skill, we could open that badge and see who has earned that. And we can either put a feeler out, we could see where they're at, you know, talk to their their supervisors and see if they have the bandwidth to be able to join this new team. Um, in IBM's case, they can pull from their employees all around the world to create these unicorn work teams that fit the exact needs of whatever that client is looking for. This is something, even if you think within your own organizations, this is something we've never been able to do before. We all have a lot of skills and talents that a lot of times only the individual or the people closest to that individual know about. By putting these badges to those skills and talents, now those are discoverable across the organization, which really opens up unique opportunities for that individual as well as that organization. Uh, we all have people who, you know, are the ones that tend to get called upon to do the same tasks over and over when we know there's probably lots of people out there that have those skills or have those talents, now they can be discoverable if we can wrap badges around them. 
On the right side of the screen here, what you're seeing is that DNR badge that I referenced earlier. Um, this is an OSHA related badge. So this was a, a course that was contracted through our business and industry center at Madison College, contracted by the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. Um, you see I've circled the uh, expiration date over on, on the far right side. So back up that date by six months and this badge, the people, the individual people, because there were more than one who earned this badge, are going to get notified that, okay, in six months, this badge is going to expire. Our individual business and industry people are also going to get notified so that they can say, okay, in six months, we know, Wisconsin DNR, that you have at least 20 people who are going to need to be recertified. Why don't we start setting up a class for you? Why don't we, why don't we get ahead of this instead of getting a call the week before or the week after these things expire saying, help, these are all expired, what do we do? And then everybody's scrambling trying to, to make it happen. So it's helping both the organization and, and Madison College, in this case, since we're the badge issuers, be proactive and be able to get in front of these things that expire that need to be recertified. And it provides a, uh, I guess, mental checklist for the uh, organization, they don't have to track this. They don't have to be on top of this all the time and have somebody dedicated to tracking when all of these certifications might be expiring to get people in to get them recertified. At the bottom of this screen, this earning criteria, this is um, aligned with that pallet jack certification. So those are some of the earning criteria that were needed for that pallet jack certification. You also see the tags down here in the corner. So this is what a badge, one of the badges looks like if you were to actually click into the badge and see that. Those were all those pieces that I had shown you on the screen earlier. Another really nice piece of this for employers is not only can you create this talent database, but you can be verified and, and be assured that when your individuals, your employees are taking these courses, doing this extra professional development training, whatever it is that they might be doing, these pieces within the badge, so that guts of the badge that say they had to give an 80% on this, they needed to uh, show us or demonstrate that they know how to do that. You're getting some verification in sending your employee somewhere to, to take these courses, or if you're creating the courses themselves at, internally. It's not just somebody showing up and playing on their phone or checking their email the whole time, because the badge then likely wouldn't be awarded to them if they didn't pass whatever that earning criteria is, those five, six, seven, however many they might be steps that say, this is what this individual had to do to earn the badge. Because I know at Madison College, we don't want our name on a badge if we can't verify that that individual actually did what that says, because it's our reputation on the line as well. Additionally, every time this badge gets shared out, so the individual can share the badge here on the right side of various social media, every time the badge gets shared out, both Madison College and in the last case, the uh, Wisconsin DNR are getting social media hits, marketing. So those individuals who took the class have the, have the badge, have the ownership of the badge, but we live in a time where people really like to share what they're doing online, whether it's LinkedIn, uh, some of these little icons across the top here that are circled, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, uh, that little K emblem is Zing. It's uh, uh, Western world that, I'm sorry, Eastern world uh, social media site. Email, you can embed the URL, you can download the badge, or you can print out a certificate of the badge. So there is still an option for people who would like to print and hang something in their office or in their queue. But every time that that badge gets shared, Whoever has issued it, or if it's co-branded, whoever's represented on that badge is getting that marketing. They're showing that, wow, these people really care about their employees. They're allowing them to, they're, they're providing this opportunity for them to up their upskill, to have more education, whatever that might be, is getting shared out there. And everyone within their social media networks are seeing these badges. Um, in a, from a Madison College perspective, we have had some of our non-credit, our continuing ed courses fill. Uh, the course itself has filled up the next course based on people sharing their badges out, which has been a huge benefit to us. 
on the right side of the screen here, uh, you'll see this is a badge that has actually been issued to me. It says across the top here, uh, issued to uh, Leslie Boyd on February 1st, 2020. Uh, there is a little verify button. Further down, you see what are the pieces of the badge. Again, back to those, those what makes up the interior of the badge. You have the image, who it was issued by, the description, the skills. Those are going to link back to that uh, work time database. But the important piece is that little verify button. This dark black box, anytime someone clicks that verify button, the system is going to run through all of these six different, I hope I counted right, six different um, steps to make sure that this badge is actually a verified badge when it was just issued, who it was issued by. You can read through all the things it does there. And at the very end, we'll have that check that it's verified. We all know that in an online world, things are very easy to copy, especially images. Uh, what we can't copy and the security around these badges are all of these links that are shown in this verified checklist here on the screen. So there is a lot of security around these. Yes, people can copy the images, they can copy the text, but they aren't going to have this verify piece to show that this really is a Madison College badge issued to this individual using this system, all of those, all of those step lists done at the bottom here in this verification piece. So what do people actually think about these? Uh, we have found, based on surveys we've done, as well as you'll see at the bottom here, this is an Aleutian survey. Some of this data came from um, in 2019. Badges or micro-credentials, digital credentials, pick your term, are quickly becoming the currency of choice. And by currency, I mean when people are out getting jobs, they're putting badges on resumes. They're becoming that thing that people are showing that uh, a lot of employers are looking for. Do you have Microsoft Office? Yes, I do. Here's my badge. Do you have the leadership skills that we're looking for? Yes, I do. Here's my badge. They're not replacing transcripts. Let me make that clear. They're enhancing them. They're taking that course that was potentially you know, Healthcare 101, we'll say. And rather than saying, I got an A in Healthcare 101, what they're doing is saying, in Healthcare 101, I did vital signs, which is a very obviously needed skill in the healthcare world, in the healthcare profession. And here's the badge that shows, I did vital signs and I got 90% on all the assessments. And here's the different things I had to be able to do to show that I am really good at taking vital signs. So it takes that, that course that can be somewhat generically named, maybe not, and breaking it out into what are those needed skills, what are those needed competencies or knowledge for, for these jobs to be able to attain and know that they're going into the right fields, into the right jobs. Do these individuals have leadership skills? Are they eloquent speakers? Can they, can they get up and speak in front of people? Not everybody can, totally okay. But sometimes the job you're trying to line someone up with, you can figure out better if they're a right fit based on the badges and based on the profile that these badges create on individuals. We've had employers telling us that based on badges that they see our students coming in with, they are lining them up to jobs that will eventually lead to leadership skills because they're coming in with that already. And they know they're coming in with that already because we're telling them through the badges that they have that. Uh, we have students telling us that they finally feel like they have a voice when they're interviewing. They can talk about themselves in kind of a third person sort of way. So when the question's asked, well, what else would you like to tell us? They can start, the students can start saying, well, I'm really good at vital signs, as in the last example. I, Madison College says, here's my badge to prove it. Um, it's giving these students or these individuals who are upskilling or job shifting or however that might be, it's giving them a roadmap of what can we talk about, how do I talk about it, and how do I feel confident talking about it because now it's backed by evidence. They've got the verified badge showing that they're not just saying they're good at this, they have that evidence of that badge showing that. A little bit about the Digital Credentials Institute. Uh, I didn't really talk about us a whole lot. I sometimes start with that, sometimes bring it in at the end as to why, why should you listen to us? What are we, what are we talking about and what do we know? 
Um, at Madison College, we issued our first badge back in 2012. So we have been at the forefront of the, the digital badging world really from its infancy. Um, to date, we've issued, I should update this, um, through 2019, we've issued almost 10,000 badges. We're now well over that. Um, we formed the Digital Credentials Institute in 2018. Uh, it was formed as a way to help other organizations start creating digital badging platforms, how we could help them implement, what could we do. We had so many different organizations, whether they're educational, professional, whatever that might be, reach out to us and say, help us, please. You guys have been doing this for years. You've got it figured out. How do we get this up and going quickly? And so that we're headed down the right path so we don't have to make those U-turns and pivots and start over in what we're doing. So that's where the Digital Credentials Institute was formed from. That was the basis. Uh, we are partnered with both Credly Acclaim and Badger. Both of them are, the two of those organizations are, I would say, probably the largest digital badging software platforms in the U.S. Um, we're actually partnered with both of those, but we work with all of the different vendors around the world. Uh, as of this past December, uh, through the different clients that you see a, a kind of a sample of lists below, we have issued over 100,000 badges to all the US states and territories. And we are badges in over 125 countries around the world, which I think is pretty amazing and gives you just a small, small, small sampling of just how many of these badges are in existence and how quickly they spread around the world. This is just through our clients in the span of one year. So just let that sink in a little bit. Um, IBM alone has issued over a million badges and that's just one organization. So these badges are definitely here to stay. They are not going anywhere. They are growing exponentially every day. And there's more and more people. We get people, I have people reaching out to me almost daily um, asking how, what do they need to do? How do they get started? What are the next steps? So we're, we're growing quickly, the badges are growing quickly, and we're here to hopefully help local, local organizations, worldwide organizations, you name it, uh, be able to figure out how they can capitalize on these really great little tools. This is some of the sampling of, of what we do. This is some services that the Digital Credentials Institute offers. I am definitely not gonna read through all this because it's a lot on there. Um, this is, again, being recorded, and you can also find all of this information on our website, which is listed uh, up in the title there. I have done a lot of talking, and I kind of uh, designed this in a way where we can answer a lot of questions if need be. Um, I'm opening up the Q&A, and I'm not seeing any in there, so if you have any questions, uh, I can either open up the... I'm sorry, I'm looking at the... Um, user list, I can either open up the user list and work through that, or I see one out here um, from Mary Jo, thank you. Do badges go with an employee to another employer? Yes, they do. So any badge that an individual earns stays with that individual. Um, if it's tied to the, the, um, the email that's the employer email, you can attach various emails to your badging account so you don't lose those. So my Madison College email, if I were to decide to go work for UW-Madison, I'm no longer using my Madison College email. I can add in either my Gmail account or my new UW-Madison email, and it will stay attached to me. So the, the knowledge earned or the skills earned, that badge stays with that individual. Any other questions out there? all so quiet. That's great. So hopefully that means that I've answered uh, a lot of questions for you. I didn't really talk about the different types of badges that we have available, and I know we have a little bit of time here, so I can certainly talk about the different ways in which we use badges. Um, I have all the questions open, so if anybody types in a question while I'm talking, I'll definitely uh, answer that as we go. So keep that in mind. Um, at Madison College, we have, I believe right now, we have 10 different what we call lines of badges. Um, and by a line of badge, I mean we have non-credit badges, we have credit badges. Um, I talked about business and industry. That's a line of badges that we have where we co-brand with uh, Wisconsin DNR or 
Um, we showed a uh, forward service corporation badge. Uh, that was an articulation badge. Uh, what that is, is the course, the class, the education actually took place at forward service corporation. Uh, we have an articulation agreement already signed with them that says this course equals this course at Madison College. So when the students finish the course at faculty, or I'm sorry, Forward Service Corporation, they are issued a badge, assuming that they pass everything needed to do in the criteria. If those students decide to enroll at Madison College, that badge is that thing that they turn in in order to earn that credit for prior learning. So the badge that I showed you earlier, I believe has a two credit, um, credit for prior learning attached to it. So if they enroll at Madison College, they turn in that URL for their badge that's uniquely linked back to them. They then automatically earn those two credits for that articulated course. Uh, we just launched our newest line of badges this week, which are our, our athletic award badges. We're in the midst of a week-long digital badging or a digital athletic digital banquet, I believe it's called. And all of our student athletes are earning digital badges uh, digital badge awards for all of the various student athlete awards that are given um, around the, the college here. Uh, we're also issuing volunteer service awards and faculty awards. So our newest line is the, the awards. We are doing some badging with high school, dual enrollment and uh, advanced standing badges. So we'll start to see some of our high school uh, students who are doing these dual enrolled classes will also be earning badges as they come through. Again, a lot of those are already transcripted. Some of them may not be and they'll work very similar to the articulation badge where they would turn that in in order to earn that credit for prior learning badge. I do get questions about how, why would we badge something that's already transcripted in the case of the high school students? And the answer for that is we do our best to try to market that opportunity to high school students. Our best is not always enough in, in a lot of cases. And by adding a badge to it, we know that high school students are going to share their badges to social media. It would be, it's very rare that they're not posting that stuff on social media. So we're hoping that when they start posting that, we are gonna get an influx of parent inquiries and student inquiries saying, why didn't my student take this class? Or parents asking their students, why didn't you take this class when you could get credit for it? So it becomes a marketing tool, again, that we don't have to market. Our, the students, the high school students will do it for us, which is fantastic. We have another question that came in. How do current Madison College degree program students earn or acquire badges that match class credentials? Um, so we have a line of badges, core workforce skills that are college-wide. Those can be added into any class. Those are things like communication, um, ethics, teamwork, uh, listening, reading, writing, speaking, which fall under the communication. There's, there's eight core workforce skills and then two larger ability badges that they stack up to. Those can be added into any course. Reach out to me. I can help you do that. Um, if you're looking to add a badge to your course based on some technical skills or some skills or some knowledge that are happening in your course or in your program, again, reach out to me. We can see if we already have some at the college or we can talk about what do we do to create those for you or for your program? So definitely um, shoot me an email, uh, give me a call, whatever's, whatever's simplest for you, however you'd like that to happen. You can also check through our Madison College digital badge database. Um, if you Google Madison College Acclaim, A-C-C-L-A-I-M, you can see every digital badge that we have that is public at this time. I believe there's around 150. So you can go through, you can look at them, you can click on them, you can play around with them. Um, but you won't see the, the individual data unless the students have made it public. This is just our database that's public. So feel free to search through that anytime you want to. Um, it's linked off of the DCI uh, website that is linked throughout the presentation here. Um, you can also find it on our Madison College website as well. There's a, a explained in a little different way internally for Madison College as well. So you can find all of those out there. But yeah, reach out to me anytime if you have questions, if you have ideas, ways in which to use different badges. Uh, we have our STEM Center that's using badges to allow individuals, they, they basically do a test step-by-step -step for how to use the different 3D printers. Once they've passed that successfully, they've earned a badge. 
Now those people can come back in and use that 3D printer whenever they want to. The student workers can actually look and see if those individuals coming in have a badge or not. And that's how they know whether they can use those machines. Um, that came from many people coming in saying, sure, I know how to do this. And then they'd break the machine. So they needed to create kind of a, a, gate, a gatekeeper system so that they could verify that those saying they knew how to do it actually did and could come in and, and use those machines. So that's a, another way in which we are using these. So the, the great thing about these digital badges is that there is no container for them. They can be anything you want them to be. The bad thing about digital badges is that they can be anything you want them to be. So one of the things that the Digital Credentials Institute has done is really help work with organizations, with, with faculty, with programs, with uh, you name it, to help define what is the strategy going to be to, to get you started, to get you going, and then turn it over and let you, you know, the sky's the limit with what you want to do with these. But if you need to have a, a grounded foundation, you need to have all of that figured out before you start in this on your own, creating your own digital badging system, to jump right in would cause um, you to have to make some pivots and some turns because ultimately the value of the badges lies within who's issuing them. What you want to see and what you wanna show is that these are coming from, in this case, Madison College. And that's what the value really truly is, is as I said before, we don't want to issue a badge to somebody who we don't know has actually done the steps needed to earn it because it is our reputation on the line as well. We have to hold them at a high value in order to keep the value high for the badges. So we try to keep doing that across whatever type or whatever line of badge we're, we're looking at doing. Any other questions? That's kind of all I have for today. Um, I was hoping we'd have a few more questions in here. If you come up with more questions as you think about this, if you go back to this or uh, further down the road, my email, our website's on there. There's a form fill in on the website. Feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to answer questions. Um, even if you have something where you would like something further, you'd like a little more in-depth explanation of these or how they might work for you and your organization, I would be more than happy to do that. Uh, I see a question about working at UW. I actually have had many conversations with uh, various UW uh, deans, professors, faculty members. Uh, I've, I've actually reached the full gamut of all of them and UW is working on digital badging. They have a few pockets that have got things started and they're, they're slowly trying to figure out how to work them into their system. So those conversations have started at the UW. Um, it's just going to take some time. Uh, as you know, UW is a big ship to steer, as you have pointed out in here. So it's gonna take a little bit to get them uh, as part of the, what they do. Uh, we have them written into our academic plan at Madison College, and that took a while. Again, we started in 2012 and it's, now 2020. So it, it didn't happen overnight, but I'm really glad that it has and we have had nothing but success with these and we're, we will continue to have much success with these. So thank you all so much. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to do this. I know we're probably getting screen overload with all the various webinars and, and Zoom meetings and, and whatnot. So I really do appreciate your time and I hope that you found at least bits of this useful. And I would uh, love to hear from you if you have further questions or would like anything additional.